Yo, what up? This is another take of tap to tap to tap. Tap in. We want to welcome you back to tap in. Uh, thank you so much for subscribing, for liking our videos, and for commenting. Uh, we appreciate the support. Continue to support tap in. Today, uh, I have a question for you guys. Do you feel like it's important to have a sense of belonging in the church? And do you believe that inclusivity is a thing that you would appreciate from your church? Mm -hmm. Let's get into it. All right, welcome back to another Take of Tab In. And I'm your boy, Faith of Sound. Today, I'm only chilling with the ladies. What's up, ladies? Hello, hello, everybody. This is your beautiful girl, Evie. It's your girl, Big M. Not the little one. I'm so respectful of her name, yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, hello. It's Savvy here. Oh, it's Savvy. Savvy. Oh, I like Savvy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, our boy JD's been missing for a minute. Uh, our boy C Breezy, uh, unfortunately couldn't be here tonight. Uh, but we here to have a good time, hey, right? The ladies. They are hanging out with the ladies, man. Oh, yeah. Girl power. Let's see, let's, yeah. Let's see if I can hold my own here. Right. Oh, wow. That's okay. So, um, question for you guys. How important is it for you as an individual to feel included and the, and partake and, you know, the seriousness of the church, like the day to day operation of the church? How important is it for you as a member? to feel included? Um, it's really important because it's like, you know, you spend a lot of time at church or like, even if you're not there every single day, you still spend a significant amount of time there. You know, those are people who are important to you and important to your life. And it's like, if you just go and you hear about this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing, you're like, well, well, dang, all right. Like, <laughs> you was cringe. Right. Like, <laughs> glad I didn't get the memo, you know? So I think like, just, not necessarily like being in everything, but I guess just being in the like in the in the loop. It's really important. And it's like then you can start to feel like left out, and then it's well, people don't like me. I don't want to come to this church anymore. No and like in extreme cases, like you just leave. Like you like you know like you start trying to leave the church altogether. Like it's it's a whole bunch of stuff. So I think just being included is really important. Yeah. Answer before I get back. <laughs> Why do you want me to answer first? Well, for me, I think it depends on how much you care. Okay. Huh. Hey. <laughs> my turn. Talk about it. Wow, you're talking to go first. 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 Yeah. Okay. Talk about it. Yeah, so what I mean about, like, if you really care, because... I feel like there's time in the church. Just I just go and I'm like, okay, I'm going for the worship and they're preaching. That's it. And I just want to go home. I don't even want to, I don't even want to stay back and, you know, communicate with anybody else and do that little chit chatting after church. I don't even want to do that. So, right. It all depends on how much you care for your church and what, what is it that you want to be part of, to be honest. Like for me, if I want to be part of the youth, then I'm going to need to know information about the youth. Like, mm -hmm. what time do you guys operate? Or what is it going on with the youth? If I want to be like in a different type of group, then I'm going to ask questions. But anything else, if I if I feel like I don't want to, like for example, if I said I don't need to, to know any report in the church, I mean, that's not something I'm really interested in. So like, do I care enough for me to ask questions? And now if I care and nobody's giving me information, then now I feel left out. Right? But if I don't care, you're not giving me anything, then I'm good. So that's, that's how I feel about it. Try to be piggyback on what you said, <laughs> But I ain't gonna lie, I used to care. <laughs> I wanted to know where my money was going that's every so day. Fun. But now I don't care because I feel like once you care too much, once you're too much involved in what's going on in the church, what they do with this, what they do with that, like, how do I say it? How you say this about me? How you say that? In, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, when you go to the church, you're like, okay, we're supposed to have a members meeting. We didn't have it. Now I'm sitting at the church. Everything they do bother me. Because I don't know where my money going. I don't know what what's what. To me, I don't care no more. Maybe that's why I don't care to feel 
and I don't care if it included the government. Okay, I'm gonna just go do what I gotta do and go home. That's mm-hmm. I just I don't want like, to go. I least, don't have something to say. Yeah, what's it called? Like I completely agree. Before <laughs> I I used to care so much. Like I used to be like, like child. I stress for no reason. But now it's like, I really go, like, I get up, I get there, I do what I got to do, and I do it. Like, I don't have time for any games, I don't want to know. Don't talk to me. And it's like, but, it really okay. just, it depends. My yeah. thing is now, when you don't feel included, what next? You stressing for what? I, I hear you guys, right? And I'm seeing you're listening, and it saddens me a little bit. No crying. It, it does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, the, the reason why it saddens me is because we have to be good story of everything that God placed in, you know, in our hands. And being at a church, you're not je- just there to be a spectator, right? You're not just there as spectators. And you have to hold the people that is, you know, leading accountable. So the minute that a church member no longer cares about what the day-to-day operation of the church is, uh, like it's time That's for you to leave. Think about this. Um, it's like you're at work and they're not taking care of what they need to take care of. Your 401k is at risk, right? Your retirement is at risk, but you don't care about it, right? I'm just here to get a paycheck and bounce. Next thing you know, that job goes under. Right. And there goes your job and there goes your retirement. Right. So if you never complain to the union about what's going on, if you never speak on, you know, what you're observing, that that's not pleasing and that's not profitable for that business, then that business is going to go under. So are you going to sit back and say, you know what, I don't care about this business going under. Right. So when I go back to the church, it's even bigger. Right. It's it's the spiritual aspect in everything that we do in church. Right. And God has given us a responsibility as Christians, right? To take care. Like we, I think, and we were talking about this last week. Yeah. We, we, we take the church and turn it into a business so much so that people feel the way that you guys expressed earlier, right? Because it's about one family. Uh, it's about one man. It's about one, you know, uh, um, a woman and let that pastor have a strong wife. Uh, with a strong voice, right? A strong opinion. That that could really hinder a church. So I'm I'm wondering how many people in the church are in the church but hurt like you guys just expressed. Because we talked about, you know, uh, abuse in the church last week. And this sounds like abuse to me. To where you don't care about what like what the church is doing with his finances? Are we going to the community? Are we giving back to the community? Are we helping those who are in need in the church, right? And what does our finances look like? Are you, are we able to sustain, you know, our, our day-to-day, you know, uh, billing, you know, are, are the lights able to be paid with no problem? And those who are working in the church, are they being compensated? Like, that's something that sh- the church shouldn't have to ask, you know, for those information. That's information that should be given on a monthly basis, right, to the church. Because when you tell people, you know, I heard about the the, the tithing thing, right? A lot of churches are are pushing tithing. Tithing is good. Tithing is is biblical, yeah. right? Um, Christ told us to give with our whole heart. That does not look like ten percent to me. It could be twenty. It could be thirty. Mm-hmm. It could be forty. It could be fifty, right? So if somebody is giving with their whole heart. And you're treating them like that, like what you guys express. That person is gonna be, it's gonna relent in their giving. Right? I don't see this going well for anybody. If anything, like it's you trying not to get hurt because you don't want to get too involved. You, man, you, 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 you my should, should the church be like that? Though? I was, I was gonna say. Well, for me personally, the reason why I don't, I have to be one to a point where I don't care to protect my peace, due to the fact that at a young age, I felt like I was, in I was really involved in church. Yeah, like child was fifteen in the adult choir. That's how involved I was. Yeah. So because I was involved, she got them vocals yeah. out. <laughs> because I was involved in so much at the church and I knew too much at that time that was at that time of me knowing so much about the church that was the time I was the most hurt in the church mm-hmm. yeah 
So for, to protect myself, I mean, okay, you know what? I'm going to just go to church. If I'm leaving, if I got to leave, I'm going to leave. Do what I got to do and go. And bounce. I don't want to know too much to protect my peace. So. I think, I'm so sorry. I think for right. me, I, I think it's different for me. The way I see it is the structure of the church. So I see it this way. If we have leaders as a member, I must say, I must say as a member first. So as a member, I, I want to go to church. Yes, I want to give money. I want to do everything at the church. But at the end of the day, I know that we have a communion that's supposed to make it that. Like, this is supposed to talk about. <laughs> She's talking hypotheticals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, but I'm, saying, I'm saying, so no, that's the way I see it. So if, if it's the structure. If I know I have a group of people that's working for us, the only thing I'm expecting to receive at the end is just like, because I put my trust in those people. I'm like, hey, I need you guys gonna do the work, and then I don't have to worry about anything. I do. It's just not like I don't belong, or you guys not giving me information. Yes, the meeting, the member meetings, or anything that wants it, it should be transparent. You give me those information, I can access that problem. Then I'm like, okay, but if if it if the structure of the church is different, where there's nobody that's fighting for anybody. It's like like if you said something about the workers, people is working, you don't know if they're being conversant. So now it's like. There's nobody working, so this is where I feel like as a member, I should be able to talk and have a voice to say, hey, listen, I see this is not working. How can we together make it better for the church, for the glory of God? Then I'm gonna feel be- then I'm gonna feel like I belong to this group. Why? Because you guys give me a voice, but if you don't give me a voice, no, I, I, that's when I'm like, I don't care. And and <laughs> that this happened a lot in churches that are not educated. Mm-hmm. Um because we have this mentality. I don't think it's a Haitian mentality. I, I think it's all cultures. It's cross culture. Right? Um where certain things, you know, that happen in the church, you know, uh leaders feel as if like they they do not need to dis- disclose it to the church. But I'll I'll say this. If you don't want to disclose, you know, how much money the church has in their account, mm. don't come to the church and ask for money when you don't have. That's how I see it. Right? Because if everything is a secret, then you're able to handle everything on your own. Yeah. And that's not what the church is, is about. It's not. It's a community coming together. If we're coming together, let's come together. Right? Um, it's really hurtful to hear that well, we already know this was happening in churches, right? That there's no... Um, to experience it in your own church, it's even... It, it feels it feels worse, mm-hmm. right? And for people to start feeling as if, like, they don't want to be part of and distancing themselves, or I'll just do this and, you know, bounce. Like, where where does the relationship comes comes in? Like, why why, why do that? I mean, I feel like this problem, it should be able to be resolved. So that's the thing, though. The leaders have to come in. Like I said, I still feel like there's people that don't care, not because they are hurt. Because a lot of people do not know what's going on in the church. There's people that be like, okay, I love this church. It's my church. Yeah. Because they I simply just don't. want to. Like, like, they're, I not, yeah. they're, they're not invested yeah. in the church. It's not like they're not invested. It's just like not some it. people go to church. For example, some people might go to church because I like the Sunday school lesson. I'm going to go to that church because the way you guys do service. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the church because I see the youth is working. They don't know the behind, you know. They don't know anything that's going on. Of course, because they got there to something that that was already established. So now you you have to understand that, right? If you build your house, you 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 build the house. Yeah. So you you know the way that you feel about your house, nobody else that walks in there is gonna feel the same, and they might treat it differently because I know what I pour into. Yeah, they don't know that. You, you understand? So what you're saying applies to people that just came inside of a church that's already established that have uh, uh an identity, right? But yeah. what we're talking about is you being a church member, you being involved in a church, and you are excluded from everything that's happening the day-to-day operation of the church. How How is that right? I mean, it's, it's not right. But I, I'm, I'm still going to go back to the structure of the church. Because it's like the bylaws of the church. What is it like the, what? the bylaws of the church? <laughs> what is the bylaws of the, the church? Of the church. <laughs> <laughs> For those who do not know, <laughs> what is the church bylaw? That's a good question. What is the church bylaw, um, the baby? Oh, what? Oh. You the, you the, 
Let's see. Um, do I just look up bylaw or church bylaws? Yeah. I, bylaw. Well, I'm going to help you out because I, I happen to know what it is. Just <laughs> <laughs> enlighten us. So, <laughs> a church bylaw is a set of rules and regulations voted on by the members of the church on how the church is supposed to function, yeah. starting from the top to the bottom. So, now go. Okay, so you guys, you guys have the definition. <laughs> so my thing is, if we know the violence of the church, like for example, if as a member, I am supposed to receive a report every month. Or a report, because I'm not going to be like, I'm going to this specific church, but in general, right? Just, mm-hmm. I need to get a report. Or you guys need to tell me about like, for example, I need to know how many people baptized for the month. Or how many... Even just some, you know, activities that happen during the month. I need to know this information. It's in the bylaw. So they're supposed to be there, but we don't, when the, when the leader is not following that structure, it, it's like now we're following a different structure that's not even in paper. I, I don't, it's not like I don't, I'm gonna say I won't care about anything that's going on because there's nothing going on. There is stuff going on. It, it felt divided. It feels like a whole house. It's like, you live in your parent house. You don't know what's going on, you know, inside their bedroom. They don't know what's going on inside my bedroom. But we live in the same house. We can have dinner. We can sit together. But at the end of the day, I'm going to go in my room. You're going to go in your room. That's how it feels like. Because it's not the same structure. Because the structure is broken. So if the structure is broken, there's no way somebody going to come to church and be like, I care. No, because you know you're in the worship team. If something is wrong, yes, you can say anything. But you don't know what's going on in the finance team. You don't know what's going on in the media team. You so, know the problem. So, okay, so that, that, okay, then let's segue to this. Should you feel a sense of belonging in your church? I if we're saying what should. we're saying, should you feel a sense of belonging? Like when you walk in, should you feel like you belong here? Should you feel comfortable? Should you feel, you know, like the, the, the space is inviting, right? The people are inviting. Should you feel a sense of belonging? Of course, yeah. I'm like, it, it depends you on what you call here. me. Because I might come to church where I feel like I belong to the church because of when I come to um when I come, I know that the ushers gonna come and welcome me. I'm gonna be sitting next to somebody, or I come in a, a group of people like the youth or the the group them, you know, the man or the ladies. We have this conference, and then it's just like, I participate in different things. Then I'm gonna be like, okay, I feel like I belong in that group. I do as. A church, he's not saying like if he's saying the church. If you go step in a building and you uncomfortable, you but will not feel like you you're uncomfortable. Here. Though, what makes you uncomfortable? Was it like when you're on you? You see, I'm gonna give you an example. So I'm gonna give you an example. Okay. <laughs> so what makes Maybe, you uncomfortable? Let me give you an example. Give me an example. Uh, a friend of mine disclosed this to me. She was like, she went to a church, right? And uh, she went to the church and she said it was, you know, she'd been there before. And she felt uncomfortable before, but that particular time, it just went over the edge. Yeah. Uh, the pastor's wife, the pastor's wife stared her down from who? the head to, to her head to her toes, right? And the whole time she felt uncomfortable, but the pastor's wife never approached her, right? To say like, you know, what is wrong or what is good or anything, but she was staring at her the whole time. So she left the church. And she vowed never to come, never to come back to that church again. So if somebody walks in church, right, to where they can encounter God, should anybody, see, I just give an example of, you know, a leader, a pastor's wife, Mm -hmm. should anybody make them feel like they don't belong in that space? Anybody. No. Like, is that okay for church? Is that what we're doing right now? <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing right now, but that's not what it should be. <laughs> so, Actually, I agree. That is what a lot of churches are doing right now. Because, you know, like, it's... I'm trying to word this correctly. Like, it's not good and stuff, but, like, we were talking about this last week, you know. People, especially Christians and religious people, we pass judgment a lot. Okay. You know, so it's like, even sometimes we don't even know like they don't even know, but it's like you're looking at somebody and you know they used to do something or whatever, and it's like now because of that, you are completely pushing them away from the church. They don't even feel safe in that space anymore. You know, or just hearing what you be saying, they don't feel safe in that space or they don't feel comfortable. They don't feel like they belong, you know? And it's like 
when you walk into like, you know, the house of the Lord somewhere, like you're supposed to feel safe, you're supposed to feel good and all of that and feel the love of God and you you don't feel it. It's a really scary thing, you know? Because it's like, you walk in there and it's like, it's just not giving what it's supposed to give. I mean, I see what you guys are talking about. That's, this is what I'm thinking in my head. I feel like when you guys talk about belonging, there's a different category of hospitality. Mm-hmm. When I come to a church, I, I feel like, you, you know, I need somebody to welcome me to this church to make me feel like I'm safe. I get that part. Then I, I go to teens. If I say I'm in this church and I have a ministry and I want to do something within the church, I'm expecting that if I go to this team, that the team leader, the worship leader, or the media team leader, whoever's in charge, need to make me feel like I belong in that team. They need to take care of me mm-hmm. and not be biased. And if, let's say, the administrative work, if I say I need to know the information of the church, it should be open to me to know stuff that's happening in the church. My thing is, there's people that only need hospitality. There's people that need hospitality, part of a team, and the information of the church. So I feel like if you categorize it, then I can be like, okay, I feel like I belong in this church because somebody welcomed me and it's really good. Or I feel like I don't belong because the way they're treating me. If you break it down like this, then I can be like, okay, I care about this, but I don't care about this one. Or I care about everything that involves the church. But but my thing is, before you get to separate, you go into teams, you would have to first go to the church, see how to order. You don't just come and be like, okay, I want to go to the youth team. Yeah. Or I want to do this team. You have to you feel to some type of the congregation. You have to feel some type of belonging in the church in order to be like, oh, I belong in the church, so I want to be part of this team. So, yeah. so Evie, everything you just said, you answered yourself. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. Because when you walk in, when you walk inside the church, the reason why you stay is because you felt welcome. Yes. Yeah? Closing. Okay. So now that you sat down, right, and you observe and you give in information as to, like, what activities that church has, then you're like, okay, I could be part of this group. So now you feel a sense of belonging, right? Are we here so far? Okay. Then now you're part of this group, and now you become involved in the church. You understand? So now that you are involved in the church, the things that are happening around the church now becomes your problem because you now belong to this church. You understand? So you cannot, you cannot worry. You cannot not worry, you know, per se, for lack of better words. Uh, you're going to, um, want information, you know, so that you may know how to help the church better. And I think that's what, you know, um, members meeting are for, mm-hmm. right? It's for us to discuss, okay, what we needed was this, mm-hmm. right? This was the agenda, right? Uh, have we achieved that? And what's needed to achieve it? Okay, then we can bring across this problem. How do we go about solving it? As a church. All right. It's okay for leaders to make decisions on their own. Yeah. That's okay. We all agree? That's what they have to make decisions. On their own. What do you mean by on their own? Outside of anybody else's input. That's okay, right? If it benefits the when church, when it comes to certain things, yes. whatever benefit oh, yeah. the church, no benefit the church. No, if it benefits, so. if it benefit the church, the members, yes, they should be able to make decisions based on what they feel like would benefit the church. Yeah, I got a point. I got a point. Okay. Is it okay for people to do that? Yeah, yes. 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 All right. Well, how so, how not now. How is I got a point. Just the whole I got a point. Oh, just, okay. I got a point. Just, big look. him. So now, <laughs> big <laughs> him, not the Lord. Put some respect on your name. So you said it's okay for a leader to make that decision. So whether it hurts the church or not, you trust in that leader to make that decision. No, but not. You said yes earlier. And I said yes. You said no. I said if it benefits the church. No, oh, yeah. Don't if it doesn't. So if it doesn't, it, it, make your point. Rather, it, it benefits, benefits the church or not, you're trusting that you to make that decision. What does not? What was not so? I mean, like, no. Wait, you have to though, because that's the leader. Anyways, that's that that that's that's one, right? Uh, okay. So rather that you know, um, whatever decision they make, whether it work or not, you're responsible because you trusted them to make that decision. Whereas, right, you could go and blame them all you want to. You never told them that they can't. 
So whereas if we together as the four of us sit down and make a plan, right? And things don't work out. How many people are going to work to fix it? All four of us. Four. How many people is that going to be vested to, to fix it? All four. Mentally, physically, emotionally, we are going to be involved in it because we are, we are all part of the downfall of it. Yeah. You understand? So I bring it into my marriage. This is how I make decisions within my marriage. I cannot just get up and say, I'm going to do this without, you know, discussing it with my wife, without knowing what her opinion is, right? Without knowing how she feels about it. Yeah. You understand? So when I make that decision, then she's not going to turn around and say, well, you decided to do this. So you face it. Mm-hmm. It's the same for the church. It's the same for the church. If we all gonna, if we're gonna fall, we're gonna fall together. That way we can help each other to get back up. But if you're gonna make the decision and you're gonna fall, or you better fix it, you better be strong enough to fix it yourself because you decided to make a one man team in a community. When things like this happen, like where's the members? Why are the members not talking? And they not saying because they true. have the mindset that you were talking about earlier. Don't care. If it doesn't affect me, I don't care. Yeah. They have that mindset. So once you have that mindset, whatever happened, you're going to accept it. Like I'll tell you this. Like a church building, you walk into it, like God is going to use anybody to bless you. Mm-hmm. That, that's that is. God can bless you at the worst church in the world. Mm. He can because there's no limit to what God can do. Sure. Right? It doesn't mean that you're going to have a healthy lifestyle in that church. Does not mean that. Don't get it twisted. You could get deliverance, you know, from anything at the worst church in the world. It doesn't mean that you're going to have peace. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a healthy church lifestyle. Does not mean that. And that's what we confuse things. As long as I'm being delivered, as long as I'm being blessed, as long as I know I encountered God one way or another, I don't care about anything else that happened at that church. Is that, you know, good stewardship? Is that what, you know, the kingdom of God looked like? I, I doubt it. But how did we get to this point? Like what, what happened to us? that we got to this point, right? A lot of times is you find out leaders that's been there for a long time. You know, sometimes, you know, somebody will tell you like, you know, God called. God called everybody. God called Moses, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. You know what Moses didn't do? He did not see the promise that God gave him. God told him, I'm going to take you to a land with milk and honey. Moses, Moses looked at it, never entered. It was because of the people. You could blame the people all you want to. <laughs> I blame them. <laughs> you, could, you could blame the people <laughs> all you want to. It's the people. <laughs> blame the people all you want to. And, you know, a lot of leaders will use Moses, you know, for their pastoral, you know, a wall. Right, they're they're telling you know as you know God chose Moses, He chose me to lead this church. But are they honest with themselves when the time is up? Right, because a lot of the church that goes through these problems is because leaders don't know how to give up power. Think about this: like you've been leading, you've been the man for so long, and then it comes to a point of time where you have to give it up, and that's where a lot of this this problem comes in the church. It's hard. It's hard, right? So, like, passing of the torch is something that most churches now they don't recognize. They don't. They don't. (laughs) They'll tell you that it's not biblical, right? Now, what you over here being messy for? I'm not. They'll tell you that it's not biblical, but it is though. Yeah. It is because God tells us to make disciples. And that's what discipleship comes from in the church, right? As a pastor, you're supposed to bring up the next one, whether it is for the church or for another congregation, whatever it is, bring up the other one. But a lot of pastors won't know that somebody has a calling on their name. 
they will hinder you before they actually help you because they think whatever they, they, they do is going to be to replace them. I have a question. Yeah. And it's the same as the workplace. Then I have a question. Yeah. Will that stop you from doing your work? It shouldn't stop you from doing your work, but it will discourage somebody. Come on, what are you doing, man? Right. Yeah. It will discourage somebody from doing their work. If, if you're not spiritually strong, if, if you're not mentally strong, and if you don't have good people around you, like, you will be discouraged, man. Like, yeah, church hurt is, it's, it's a real thing, man. It's a real thing. Like, a lot of people, you know, I was talking to a, a friend of mine the other day, uh, yesterday, actually. And we were talking about something, and he was like, man, I, I like, there's so much that I can say, there's so much that I can do, but, you know, I'm scared for the souls that are weak. Yeah. And, and it resonated with me. I understand where he was coming from. Because a lot of the things that we do, it, it affects other people that were not involved directly. But, but then it's like, what's the purpose of church? How it, I feel like we're going like far away from God's word because if, if the church is here as a community and it's to bring souls to God and it, instead we kind of pushing them away. So what's the purpose of having a church? Does God even take glory in that church? Clap it up for you, yeah. She's been dumb to get all night. <laughs> she, she has come to her sense. <laughs> right. <laughs> if, uh, if you welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> well, so that, that's the purpose, man. I think we've moved so far from, you know, what, church is what church is supposed to do yeah. that we're creating our own thing now. And, and we talked about last week, churches becoming cults. Yeah. Slowly but surely. They becoming cults where, you know, it's a family. Churches are becoming cults and, and the people in church are watching it happen. It's not that they don't, it's not that they agree with it. The mindset that you guys had earlier, they, they just fed up. They've been fighting for years. So at this point, it's like, whatever happened, that happened. Yeah, get, get what I need to get and go. Thank you. Well, you know? I think, I'm sorry. Hey, we can't fight no more. Listen. All right. <laughs> Y'all got it. We ain't going to pass no torch. Y'all got it. <laughs> 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 I can't. Uh, I forgot exactly, like, what word did you had used. But um, mm-hmm. you said something about, like, you know, being involved and therefore being included. You can be involved in the church and not be included. A hundred percent. Because, like... I was talking about, like, me personally, you know, I'm very involved in the church, you know. I'm in the media, I do this, I do that. I'd be there. In my opinion, no. Is that my choice? Partly. You know? Like, I'd be, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm not. You know? But it's like, I'm trying to word this correctly. Please do. <laughs> let it out, let it out. You know, it's like, I don't know, I feel like, um, a lot of times, like, within the church, you know, because of, like, the general, like, mentality that a lot of people have where it's like, you know, you're just, you're overworked and you're burnt out and this, this, and this, and leading, like, going back to what we said last, and, you know, like, sometimes it's a lot, and it can be to a point where it's like, it's, you go to church and you go to church for everything but God, and I feel like you're going to church for the people and you need to exclude yourself to get back into going to church for God. Does that make sense? It makes perfect sense. And I I would advise anybody that gets to that point, man, find your place where you can encounter God, right? Everything else does not matter. It doesn't matter. Like everything that you see happening in the church, this too shall pass. Like the same people that's, you know, that believe that they are unstoppable, irreplaceable, you know, man, we are nothing but this, man, like in, in a... Snap of a finger, the breath in your lungs will be gone and you will be no more, right? They will, they will, they will think about you for a week, mm-hmm. right? Once you get buried, they'll think about you for a couple of days. Okay. And after that, you are forgotten. But, but, my thing wants is, to, wants to, wants to, oh, she back. Go. No. <laughs> my, oh my God. <laughs> my thing is like, where are the deacons? Where are the other leaders? Because I'm pretty much only one person can I cause all those problems. Yeah. And, then, and it's just like, it's not, the reason why I'm saying this, because, you know, I want, 
was it? I think last week I went to an executive meeting with a, a vice president. That's the end of the company. But I asked a question. So I was like, as a leader, when you're making a decision, or what are the strategies that you use to make decision? And then he was using an example of like, when making a decision, you have to think of the customers, mm-hmm. the employees, mm-hmm. and the company. Mm-hmm. Because all three matters, right? So I'm like, I went home, of course, I went home, I'm like, I said that, I, and I started thinking of the church, because I'm like, sometimes when we at the top, we forget about, about the people. Yeah. Because it's like, because I'm, then I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get in and out, but I was like, for example, if, if I, if I, if I'm working like in a finance team, I'm like, in order for me to count money, I need members to come to church. Mm-hmm. In order for members to come to church, then it's something. For that welcome them to the church. They need the worship team. In order for the worship team, you need somebody that sang before and doing sound. You need the musicians. I didn't know today, like that's what the you know God says it's one body. It's all interconnected. But yeah. I, then I'm like, where are the leaders? So I'm pretty much sure there's members at the church that have leaders, people that so so supposed to talk for them. Like I need to, to speak what what happened to them, what's going on with them. Cause so they don't see it, so only us is saying like there's so many things happening at the church. You know, you know what happened? Mm-hmm. I think we see it. Okay, it gets to like this. I I'm used to my mom, so sometimes let's say my mom is talking in the house doing what she do. It gets to the point. It's going to be like, uh, uh we already you know She's that's how she is. Yeah, uh, then she go again, and we know, and we don't say nothing because we already know this how this person function. So with the church, I feel like we got so accustomed to the way it is. Oh, nobody's saying nothing. Nobody's doing this. Nobody that. Was that? Oh, we know that's how the church is. Just we got to flow with, we have no chance but flow because we know nothing's gonna change. That's bad. So that was it's bad. No, it, it's people who are fed up because once you've been dealing with the same thing over and over and over and over, like it, then it becomes insanity. Yeah. Right. So you've been doing this. You, you've been doing this for the past four generations, right? The past three generations, past two generations, and this generation. It's been the same, the same thing. So I've been, you know, uh, confronting you about the past four generations and to this generation. It gets redundant. Yeah. Right. So I, I think those people will come to the point where, you know, I don't think they gave up. Right. But, but they, they're waiting on God. Yeah. You, need you, a, you know what I mean? At this point, right. at this point, like, you know, Lord, like you just need to speak, man, yeah. because it, it's it's too much. But I, it's it's not just like I said; it's not just our culture. I think it's cross culture because there's so many churches that's going through the same thing. Absolutely, right? And you know, I know there's a separation of state and church, but I'm wondering, does the church now need to be policing because mm-hmm. of the business that it became? That's actually how my thing is, I feel like a book, if the church is broken, there's no way you're going to feel like you're going to be there if it's broken. So we have to fix the church first so that everybody else can feel like they belong to the church. That's, 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 I mean, after everything, that's what I'm feeling right now. I like, agree. If it's broken, there's no way for me. I'm not saying I will fight, but it's, I'm going to say it again. If I don't have a voice, if I say something, because, you know, like in all culture, if I say something at my church, I'm pretty much going to be like, Come on, like you too young. Like, why are you men talking? You don't have nothing. Like, I have more chance. Wait, what's like, what's sad? That's what I'm saying. So, I don't have a voice. I do not have a voice to say anything. So, I don't think I can. I don't. It's hard to say, I don't think I can make a difference in my church. I shouldn't say, I shouldn't make that sentence because all of us are reading the same Bible. That's right. It's the truth is in the Bible. So, if we are serving one God, I shouldn't make that statement, but I am. Yeah. So now, it's just sad to hear. Right, because the Bible says, you know, if you can look up the verse four, if you know something is wrong and you don't say anything about it, God is gonna ask you for an account of that. Mm-hmm. Right. So at 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 what point is enough enough? You know, at what point do we say, man, like this is it's done, it's enough. Mm-hmm. You know, but I understand how you feel the way that you feel. I just don't think that it's healthy to feel that way. But it's to me, it's not healthy to keep trying to hold on to hope. Okay, things. Not man, bounce. 
<laughs> bounce. I, but the thing is, everywhere you go, it's, it's probably you're gonna find a but, but you're not gonna run into that bottle. <laughs> I had this conversation earlier. No, nah, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Stay put, man. Oh, stay put. Stay if put. Want you there, because, stay put. Because, oh, okay. because, what, how do you, how you, you said something to me, uh, like last week. What was it? I don't know. We talk. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, something about like wherever you. Wow, man! Like it's like wherever you get hurt, that's where you're gonna get your. Oh yeah. What was it? <laughs> I'm thinking like it's just in the English. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wherever you got disappointed it's where you need to get your reception I don't know <laughs> it's it's like, it's it's like, like, deception yeah so wherever you get deceived is where you're gonna get received I guess <laughs> that's where you're gonna receive them you're that's receiving. Receiving. <laughs> so um, in conclusion um, I hope those who are listening this is not an encouragement for you to leave your church at all of course not um, leave the church if anything I would say we need to read our Bible and see what God wants from us right and where we need to act where we need to be silent where we need to uh, have a voice where we need to have a sit down uh, to the leaders you guys need to do better because you have a responsibility um, just be, and, and just because I say leaders, like, doesn't mean that, you know, because they are leaders, they know better, right? Because that comes with humility, like we said last week. Mm -hmm. Um, so we pray that God will really intercede and really say something about this current state of the church, uh, because it's everywhere. Yeah. Right. And, and something needs to happen because we're going to lose. I don't think we're going to lose souls because souls is for God, for Christ to gain. Yeah. Right. It's for the Holy Spirit to gain. But I think a lot of people is going to walk out church, the churches because they're not deeply rooted, you know, in the Bible to know the difference. Right. And they, they're going to be chased out of the church. So we overall need to do better because if we are being example for the world, we should be different. So, there's another take of that. Check us out next week, y'all. Like, subscribe, and comment. don't forget to comment. Don't forget to comment. Like, don't, don't, forget, forget. <laughs> don't forget to comment Well, I'm your favorite host. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. I like that. 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 I like